uh, this is the barn chimney and you'll see here that there are four octagonal stacks but these are fake because the uh, the actual chimney here is just one single flue and you can see it drawn there 600 diameter uh, concrete flue um, surrounded by these um, four octagonal fake stacks every brick was cut on site you can see these are very dense floor bricks actually they're not um, bricks fired for actual land bricks there you'll see a quick sketch that i did to um, try and follow a profile as i was cutting them i was obviously laying them in place just so i could see visually what uh, it was actually going to look like so um, again it was uh, a lot of cutting but uh, if you put effort in it always brings rewards and this is the uh, reinforcing for the concrete slab that the stack was going to be built on and just the last uh, few cuts going on uh, again just visually just so we could see exactly what we were going to be building and then the flues obviously had to uh, come up from the fireplace through the roof before we could start and these were all winched in uh, on the electric hoist um, but obviously they couldn't be bedded down with the uh, straps around them so when we're in this position we had to drill through put a rod and then hook the hoist onto the rod that went through the middle and then we lowered them into position that way and obviously each of these flues were um, jointed together with the um, fire cement and then you can see Harley doing a, a nice little job of it inside there as the flues came out of the roof we could then set out the brickwork to um, start the facework on it and then again you just see Harley putting the fire cement round so this is the start of what I like to call the table the square or rectangular brickwork that comes right out of the roof before any decorative work start just nice and square just like a table and we were decided to do dog tooth on here so dry bonded around just to make sure it all fitted and uh, once we were happy with the position of it all we then laid the corner ones lines up and just laid them and from this moment on every single brick apart from eight bricks on the very top course before the flaunching was cut on site you've already seen the dry bonding that we did uh, oh, before I go any further, I just have to say, uh, I don't know who he is. Good looking chap though. Anyway, the um, squints were all uh, being dry bonded there. And you'll see in a moment, um, I always like to um, use a template just to make sure that everything is 100% before we carry on. And there it is. And you can see pencil marked round as well. So we laid to those pencil marks but after we'd laid a couple of courses we always do a double check by putting the template back on top there and uh, from that we uh, just plumbed up uh, five courses and after the five courses of all those squints we then started to do the plinth work and using all the bricks that we had cut previously and all the flues I have to say are um, surrounded with vermiculite and the joints were as we always tend to do a highlighted flush joint on these and this again was on a, a scaffold that we tented ourselves in to keep the sun and the rain off us and um, wasn't too windy this time of year so that wasn't too much of an issue but then obviously as the scaffold was raised um, the goal posts and the canopy came off and the weather forecast was pretty good for us um, for the duration of this so um, although we did have the opportunity when we put the goal posts up again um, to tent in the weather always seemed good enough for us to carry on without doing that now I will just have to do a special mention because I often mention Harley and he featured um visually on one or two of the previous ones but someone who you've never seen 
who we couldn't do any of this without is Billy, our labourer. Um, he he does work really hard. He doesn't get any recognition, so I've got to mention him because he's we're a three-man team here, so we all have to work to get these done. And you can see I pinpoint the laser on the centre of that side and then project it up onto the, the goalposts that we had. I did that on all four corners and then from there we could then attach the, the main template. And once this was in place and with the first courses of the squints there, we could then attach the lines and just follow them. So as long as Harley and myself kept gauge and level with each other, all the plumbing up was done on the lines. So it really does speed the job up when we do that. And I have to emphasize again, every single brick you see there is cut on site prior to anything being laid. You can see all the cuts laying on the scaffold there, all just ready to be laid to them lines. Again, always, um, I always find the best way when you've got loads of plumbing up to do and um, just to save so much time by doing this. You see, we're coming close to the top of the, the fake flues and um, we're sort of trying to decide what to do to square them up. And this is what we came up with um, just to use a half round stretcher and then we axed um these um red bricks to uh, do um an axed semicircular arch on every side and obviously that just meant that um all four sides obviously had squint corners on them but they all ran um straight through to each other corner which then meant that the dental work above this um went very smoothly and you see just finishing off there and then the inverted um, plinth squints going on uh, to be running with uh, a few um, inverted plinths as well and once we did that we were then ready to look at the dental work which was um, quite heavily uh, reinforced with um, cavity ties and the bed joints because you'll see on the next couple of slides that um, they, to get the effect, they did overhang a bit. And those corner ones were very um, lopsided. So they, they were um, really heavily tied in. And then again, you can just see the top course there, only two bricks on each side didn't need cutting uh, on the whole of that stack. And there's the finish of it. Um, well, albeit with the scaffold still in place. And those little red tubes you see there are for the Wi-Fi. And please keep watching because uh, we've got some some more great um, projects coming up. Um, I think I say too much, but um, the last um, three or four videos that I've posted. And we are going to be doing stuff um, very similar to, to what you've already seen. Um, so again, like I said, um, if you want to subscribe, please do, um, because obviously you'll get notified when I upload again. And there will be lots more um, videos coming from um, the farm where the workshops, um, the brick workshops are going to be happening. So I'm going to be doing a lot through the winter, uh, continuing the arch series and I've got a few ideas to um, kind of make them a bit more interesting as well. So um, if you enjoyed this, um, just keep watching because as I said, lots more to come. And so I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm glad I mentioned Billy this time because I keep forgetting to mention him. And uh, I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.